Emotional Development and Attachment Caregivers play an important role in the emotional regulation of children. The ultimate aim of this is to produce socio-emotional competence, which is the ability for the infant or child to adapt to the social environment and this involves the regulation of emotions that abides by socially accepted norms. Under regulation can bring about externalizing, uh, conduct disorders, defiantness and emotional explosiveness. Overregulation, on the other hand can cause anxiousness, social anxiety and fearfulness. But first let me tell you about when emotions come about. Emotions like fear, distress, interest and happiness conveyed through a smile are present at birth. From three weeks to three months a social smile is developed where infants respond to their caregivers um, who also smile. In three to four months emotions like shyness, guilt, boredom, sadness and joy are present. When social referencing appears then that is the beginning of more complex emotions like guilt, shame, envy, etc. As stated in the previous video, parents help infants to label emotions. Denham proposed the components of emotional competence, which includes emotional expressions, whereby emotional displays are used specifically to display emotions and are exhibited by preschoolers. Emotional understanding is the ability to discern one's own emotional state from that of others, and the vocabulary of emotions are used. Emotional regulation is the final achievement whereby individuals cope against overstimulating, exciting, aversive, or distressing uh, emotions, managing it in a more acceptable way as to not be overwhelmed, downregulate, or angry distress um, to upregulate. By 1995, Denham stated uh, that anger, interest, fearfulness, and joy levels are relatively stable between six weeks to 30 months for the child. In 1988, Denham stated that negative emotions are more difficult to fake than positive emotions, and the researchers need to pay attention to culturally defined rules that come about during primary school years teaching children to minimize, maximize, mask, and substitute emotions. More complex emotions come about during the development of theory of mind, which includes emotions like shame, embarrassment, guilt, and empathy. Social cognition and recognition also come about as these processes advance later on. Attunement is the notion that parents can read their child's emotional state and that the parent mimics the child, creating a sense of understanding for the children. This is necessary for the child to feel important and loved and to fix negative emotions. The next half of the video will discuss attachment. Bowlby proposed the ethological attachment theory, which looked at children who were removed from their parents as a result of the Blitzkrieg during World War II. He found that the primary function of attachment is to protect the young, and that all humans have a biological predisposition for attachment, which is a reciprocal caregiving system derived from evolution. Henry Harlow confirmed the primal and evolutionary significance for attachment in observing monkeys relying on the cloth surrogate as opposed to the wire feeding surrogate. When placing a threatening stimulus, the infant monkey fled to the cloth surrogate. This shows that the attachment figure provides a safe haven or a secure base for when the infant is distressed. There is a reciprocal relationship between exploratory behavior and attachment, and the role of the parent is to soothe, validate their feelings, and encourage the child to explore. Behaviors commonly observed in attached uh, relationships include seeking for the attached figure, uh, contact maintaining behaviors such as clinging on, being oriented towards the other person when not close to their immediate proximity, being distressed on separation, and being joyful or relieved when reunited. Phases of attachment include indiscriminate social responsiveness, which occurs from birth to two to three months, and involves reciprocity dyadic interactions with anyone regardless of who is being interacted with. By two to seven months, there is a discriminating social responsiveness, where a preference occurs and differential smiling and settling come about. By seven months to three years, there is true attachment or active proximity, seeking and separation protest. A goal-corrected partnership occurs after three years, where the child is able to take the parent's perspective into account, developing internal representations of their relationship and keeping the parent's intentions in mind. Additionally, internal working models are inner mental representations of the attachment of the figure and the self, where the child incorporates the attachment relationship that becomes uh, internalized. It depends on whether the child has developed object permanence and have developed uh, the capacity for mental representations. Ainsworth and Wattig in 1969 developed the strange situation procedure which measured the attachment system of the child in a strange room. A stranger enters, the parent leaves, and then uh, is reunited with the parent, after which the attachment level of the child is observed. Ainsworth discovered that there were four attachment styles or systems, which included the secure attachment pattern, where the child is eager to interact with the parent, can communicate distress easily, is readily comforted, and there is a balance between responsiveness to the parent, exploration behavior that occurs. The caregiver is inferred to be able to prompt appropriate and predictable responses that tells the child and makes them accepting and approachable, indicating an evocative gene ex uh, environment correlation. Insecure or avoidant uh, attachment are where children have little interaction with their parents and are not distressed by separation, as well as can play equally with uh, strangers. They do not seek the caregiver's comfort, focus more so on exploration and playing with 
toys and might develop a schema that they are not lovable. As a result, they stop trying to connect with others and develop avoidance as a defense mechanism. Insecure, anxious, ambivalent children communicates uh, the stress in an angry manner to caregivers, but are not easily comforted by caregivers since either one moves away too quickly. The balance favors clinging to the parent over exploration, and the caregiver is inconsistent, being uncertain and having delayed responsiveness. They develop the schema that they are not lovable and that they must display distress in order to get the attention of others. Finally, there is this organization where children have no pattern and the infant may be afraid of the caregiver who might be scary or neglectful. This could also be a sign of mental illness in the child by exhibiting fear towards the parent. Caregivers are also measured along uh, four dimensions during this uh, task. Their sensitivity, insensitivity uh, is included as well as acceptance, rejection, cooperation, interference and accessibility uh, compared to ignoring of the infant. A damaged internal working model may come about from parents being neglectful, aggressive, chaotic, neither being a safe haven nor a secure base. There are lifelong consequences of attachment on future emotional regulation, social competence, positive self-regard, and social cognition uh, competence, which all has a moderate effect size. Attachment could be later researched through projective tests like SAT and attachment narratives for those in middle childhood. Researchers measure attachment in adolescence and adulthood through interviews about relationships and self-report questionnaires. Other factors include cross-cultural validity, of which most cultures display varying attachment styles. In cultures where the mother has a lot of offspring, the children develop avoidant attachment, and also psychological uh, meaning of the attachment style can differ across different cultures. Insecure attachment does not predict psychopathology in low-risk samples, but you also need to consider parenting adversity and ineffective temperament. Thus, in summary, we looked at the onset of emotions, the role of emotional regulation, emotional competence, emotional stability, as well as the ethological attachment theory, internal working models, styles or patterns of attachment, lifelong effects, and other factors to consider in attachment. Thanks for watching.